Chris Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside, all ready to go with what looks like a spectacular show. Boy, we got some wrestling today, Dave. Boy, we do indeed. Got tons of it. We got Jeff Jarrett coming in here in the opening match. Later on, you'll see Adrian Street and the superstar, Bill Dundee. Yep. Tracy Smothers will be here. Dutch Mantell and Rick Morton will be on the card here today. The Japanese team, Shogun, Samurai, Jimmy Golden, Frankie the Thumper Lancaster. Wendell Cooley and Jerry the King Lawler, all of them here today. Well, I'm going to tell you, I love that expiration of time match that we've got down there because that ought to be some son of a gun to see in there with Wendell and Jerry going against the Beauty and the Beast, right? That should be a good one. Oh, boy, we got it all. So I'll tell you what we're going to do is get ready to go with the opening match here. We're going to ring the bell. I'm sorry, I had to leave there for a minute. And we're going to start it out with some action right here. Jared, Jeff steps into the ring. He's going to be going against the Shadow. The Shadow out of parts unknown. He outweighs Jeff. The Shadow weighs in at about 229 pounds. Jeff weighs in at 207. Out of Hendersonville, Tennessee, Jeff Jarrett set to do battle with him in a one-fall 10-minute time limit match. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. There's a signal from him, and we're underway. Bell time has sounded, and the Shadow a brand new wrestler we haven't seen before backed into the corner by Jeff Jarrett he holds it up the referee calls for a clean clean break and gets same boy Jeff really looks in great shape doesn't he this guy works as hard to stay in condition as anybody I know he does and staying in shape like that keeps uh, keeps the speed he's fast one of the quickest wrestlers in the ring in the world Hey, I'll tell you something that has been interesting. We saw him from the very beginning, back when he was a referee, as a matter of right. fact. And uh, to see the weight and the bulk that he started to pull on now, he's up to what, 207, 208 now. Right, about 208. Goes down, takes him down, goes behind, has him waist locked, and looks like he's getting ready to turn him on an amateur move. Comes up into an arm bar, tight at the shoulder. Jeff Jarrett, the shadow in our opening bout of many today on Championship Ring. Great move by Jeff as he, uh, he just sat down on that upper arm. The shadow trying to break out of the hole. Jeff right back to it, has barred the arm now. Shadow back up on his feet. Jeff continues to work on the left arm. Hang it on, turns it over one more time, and now an attempted reversal, but Jeff right back on top of it, backs the shadow into the rope. Whip in, a big elbow in the upper arm, actually takes him down one, two, but that's all he got out of it. You gotta stay alert in a wrestling match. The shadow, when he tried that reversal on Jeff, immediately Jeff reversed him back. If you kind of relax a little bit, you're not paying attention to what your opponent is doing, you can get yourself in trouble real quick. Jeff didn't let that happen. Up top with a top wrist lock and Jeff Jarrett giving away a little height to the shadow in there. Uh, it's a difficult hole to work with. The shadow takes it around behind into a hammer lock. Jeff moves underneath, comes in, takes him down, small package, two, he got it. It was two minutes, seven seconds, and Jeff Jarrett comes through with a nice victory over the shadow. Good-looking move and a great win for Jarrett, and we've got more of it today. Time out. Be back in a moment. Okay, to the ring right now, and the new Hollywood Blondes with their director... Hollywood Hall is uh, in there with them. It's the first time we've seen them. This is the new Hollywood Blondes. And we'll get our first crack at looking at them. Boy, they've got, they've got the attire. Though. Well, they sure do. And, uh, Look at this! Talking about uh, attire. <laughs> the exotic one, Adrian Street. Into the area. His partner's already steps up into the ring. So, 
You know, what amazes me, Dave, every time I see Avery Streeter, think about it. This guy is tough, brother. Oh, he yeah. can wrestle. Came up at that basic English school, man, and he can go, but he'll sure fool you. Go ahead. All right. This match is going to be one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing out of Hollywood, California, with uh, their director, Hollywood Hall. Total weight, 483 pounds. The new Hollywood Blondes. And going against him at a total weight of 435 pounds from the Royal Forest of Dean, the exotic Adrian Street. His partner out of Australia, the superstar, Bill Dundee. This match one fall, 10 minute time limit. Referee, Jerry Calhoun. Okay, everybody's unclothed to speak. And here we go. It'll be the superstar starting against the shorter of the two Hollywood blondes. I guess we designate him as number one since he started out. Uh, I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> Hollywood blonde number one against the superstar. This ought to be a good match. Uh, the Hollywood blonde, the new Hollywood blonde. Boy, if they're anything like the old Hollywood blondes, stand by. Well, the first thing they aren't, they aren't quite as big as the old Hollywood blonde. This is true. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot. Oh, Adrian Street. <laughs> he, he planted one right on the Hollywood blonde number one. Takes him around behind. Look at that move. Hooks him back again, and he's got him dizzy from going around on him. Couldn't see it exactly, but he used his foot somewhere. Yeah, I think he did. Uh, he left him for Bill Dundee, who comes in now after the tag. Bill, round behind, knee to the back, pulls back on the chin. And Hollywood Blonde number one is in serious trouble here, it looks like. Now, Dundee oh. just throws him yeah. into the corner and says, tag that guy. Tag him, he said, yeah. <laughs> Want some of him, get a look at both of the blondes. Dundee, beautiful move, went behind on the waist lock, picked him up and took him over and down, and Dundee tags out to the exotic Adrian Street. Hollywood Hall, their director, is not too happy with the performance so far. The exotic one takes him down, stomps a little on the inner thigh, and now with a step over toe hold, moves in to put pressure on. And with a somersault, he rolled him right straight over to put that additional pressure on that leg. Hollywood blonde number two catapulted up into the ropes, Dave. Oh, he sure did. And then immediately he goes to work, jumping up and down on the side of his head. We're two minutes into the action here as Adrian Streets over to the corner makes the tag on Bill Dundee. Dundee picked him up, body slammed him, and went right back to the corner to tag Street. Dundee fires Hollywood Blonde number two in the row for a vicious clothesline. He caught him about three quarters of the way across the ring. Look at Street now. He grapevines a leg yeah. and bridges on the back bridge and gets a one, two, three as the shoulders were firmly. Uh oh! Beauty uh -huh. and the Beast hit the ring. Downtown Bruno right behind him. And they're kicking away in there. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. They didn't need to see that. In oh, look, here comes Miss Linda. I knew that she was coming in because they had a six-man match. And look at that Linda. Hey, let me tell you, she can go, too. She's got a hold of downtown Bruno. Moves in on him, crosses him, dumps him down, covers him up. Beauty and the Beast are grabbing Bruno and pull him outside the ring. And reigning supreme, Dundee and the exotic Adrian Street with Miss Linda. Absolutely, they got Bruno out of there just in time. The time on the match, two minutes, 26 seconds. Boy, the last time they saw the Beauty and the Beast, they uh, pulled some scissors out and snipped some of Dundee's hair, and that wasn't one thing that Dundee took too kindly to. What a great one in there, we'll tell you. For a fact, it was good to see Miss Linda in there with downtown Bruno. Met his Waterloo, you might say, right there. Take time out, be back. We got more.
big matches on the card. Evansville Coliseum Wednesday night main event return tag team match. Dirty Dutch Mantell and Rick Morton against Wendell Cooley and Jerry the King Lawler. A special penalty six-man tag match. Here's how it works. If Adrian Street loses, Garvin gets his music rights. If Dundee loses, he gets his head shaved. If Downtown Bruno loses, he leaves town. If the Beast loses, the guys get five minutes in the ring with Garvin. If the Beauty loses, Dundee gets his suit back. If Linda loses, Garvin gets five minutes with her. The Beauty, the Beast, and Downtown Bruno against superstar Bill Dundee, Adrian Street, and the lovely Linda. Ha, you people come on down to Evansville because I guarantee you that we are going to take it to them. That Dundee's so old, he needs a new hairstyle, and I'm going to see to it that he gets it. He trying to look like Elvis Presley. Well, Elvis is dead, and so's Dundee. Street, hey, I wrote that music, and I sang it. It's my music, so I'm going to win it. And that bimbo, huh, Bruno's going to take care of her. You'll see. CWA tag match on tap in Evansville. Robert Fuller, Jimmy Golden with the lovely Sylvia. They'll take on Tracy Smothers and Jeff Jarrett. Here come the champions now. Hey, you know now. something, I, Robert, you know this Jeff Jarrett has got Tracy Smothers. He's had about everybody that you can think of to try to take our belt let alone beat us in the middle of the ring. You'll never see that day, boy. You ought to be ashamed of yourself by now. You've had all kind of chances, all kind of partners to come out and take these titles from us. I don't think you can get the job done, son. When we get in Evansville, we're going to take you and your new partner, Tracy Smothers, brother, and we're going to show yeah. them what it's all about. You know, Jimmy, there's a lot of talk about our stable being yeah. a revolving door and that guys come in and go out. There's also talk that I'm hard to get along with. Let me tell you something baby. If you think I'm hard to get along with when you're working for me, try working against me. And that's what those boys are doing come Wednesday night in Evansville. They're working against what is now the stable. And the top of the line of the stable, the Tennessee Stud, is going to be extra hard to get along with in Evansville. Okay, we just want to get them in here and get our next one going. By golly, I'll tell you, we've had two matches already, and they've both been pretty substantial matches. Been terrific there. action so far today, and uh, looks like uh, probably no let up in sight with these two gentlemen. Uh oh, I hear the music. Yeah, uh, that uh, indicates that Oil Trough, Texas, number one citizen, along with four-time co-holder of the World Tag Title. Morton and Dutch Mantell make their appearance. There they are for one full 10-minute time limit match. Across the way, Brian Lee out of Orlando, Florida, Scott Smith out of Nashville at a total weight of 251 pounds. And going against them at a total of 453 out of Oil Trough, Texas, Dutch Mantell. And from Nashville, Tennessee, Ricky Morton. This match one fall. 10-minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun falls to the bell. And tell you what, hold on with this one. Brian Lee, we've seen him wrestle many, many times. And, of course, everyone familiar with Dutch Mantell and Ricky Morton. Well, Brian, while he didn't hold it the longest of anybody, he was at one time the CWA heavyweight champion. And so you know he's got to have something going for him. Absolutely. Dutch is finding it out right now. Hey, come on, Dutch. Get back in the ring where you're supposed to be. Oh, what an attitude. Well, you got a nasty disposition. That's the only thing I can tell you. Huh. I know that will keep you awake all night. Somebody says something like that about you, he couldn't care less. Brian Lee, nice reverse. Boy, and he took it with authority, too. Brian's a big kid. He's got all the physical attributes in the world. Eh? Yeah. Tag on Rick. Very tall, good athlete. Rick Morton coming in. Oh, yeah. And finally, Jerry Calhoun's able to get uh, Dutch back out to the corner. So it's Brian Lee against Rick and Morton. Big shoulder coming down from uh, Brian. And hip oh, beautiful move. Boy, you know, Morton really has disappointed a lot of people and i think we would be included among them i don't know what in the world happened to ricky's attitude he came in here and he accepted the appointment as a referee in that match with lawler and mantell and then ended up performing subpar as it is hey you listen i'm telling you just exactly what happened Doug. 
Ricky popped Scott Smith, who took the tag in there. Scott nowhere near as large as Brian Lee and not as much experience either. Mantell, a foot in the midsection. Morton was involved in Mantell in that... Well, I was going to make a flat-out statement of that, uh, that attempt to steal the unified heavyweight title as Morton counted him out with Lawler's foot on the rope. And he had already pushed it off twice before that. So uh, there wasn't any question of saying I didn't see it. Tag back to Morton. Move to the midsection. Scott Smith having a rough day here. Morton, where he dropped down, he cut the... Uh, Oh, oh right. yeah, Mantell, the way the world's champion does it, right. Stay tuned, Dutch. Yeah. Here comes uh, Dutch Mantell back into the action. They have been able to get Scott Smith in there and keep him in there now. They're just hammering on him, trying to keep him away from the tag on Brian Lee. Brian, the more experienced of the team. Big snap suplex from the Dutchman. He drops down with an elbow. Boy, he's rougher than a cob. I'm telling you, tag Ricky Morton. Morton, I mean, you can't take away one of the great high flyers of professional wrestling and all, but the attitude adjustment, boy, I got to tell you, he takes him over and Scott Smith is down again. I don't know. There's been a lot of questions. The King, in a conversation I had with him, uh, Dave raised the question, what happened? How come he and, uh, and Robert Gibson are teaming together? I mean, maybe it was this attitude thing before he ever came by here. Could have been. That's I don't true. Know. Scott Smith out on the floor and takes a solid right from Mantell while the referee is uh, telling Morton to stay away from Brian Lee. Oh, yeah, you're going to help him back in. I got you, Dutch. Yeah, thanks a yeah, lot, right? Yeah. Rick Morton picking Scott Smith up and body slamming him. Not trying for the cover here, just backs him under the rope, tags Mantell. Ooh, to the midsection, and Scott again. Smith yeah. lumps back down again. The Dutchman keeping him back. He's got that front chancery on him. Smith and, uh, reaching for the tag, but yeah, uh, Dutch was. kept him out of that corner. Drove him away from... Oh, man, there's that short arm scissors, and boy, let me tell you, he killed him with that one. Absolutely. Tag on Ricky Morton. Morton comes in. He didn't even have to pick him up. He could have covered him right there. But he does. A DDT on him. Slams him down. One, two, three. And that is it. Well, Scott Smith just not able to compete against Morton and Mantell and unable to get back. They kept him away from tagging Brian Lee. Brian started off the match very, very well against Mantell, and once Scott Smith got in there, they saw what they had, and they just kept him away from the corner, Dave. Exactly. They kept him in there, beat him up five minutes, one second at a time. Dutch Mantell and Ricky Morton get a win. Yeah, they get the win, okay, and I'm sure they're proud of it. I, okay, Dutch, fine. We got to take time out. We'll be back in just a moment. Wrestling action coming to Hopkinsville, Kentucky on Thursday, February 16th, Convention Center at the Western Kentucky Fairgrounds. Tickets on sale at the Bargain Center, Greenville Road, and East 7th Street. This coming Friday night, action in Madisonville, Kentucky at the Browning, Schools, uh, Browning Springs Middle School. Make that. Tickets will be on sale night of the match. Wednesday night, Evansville, five big matches. Phil Hickerson opens up against Ken Wayne. Frankie Lancaster against Scott Steiner. CWA tag title match, Robert Fuller and Jimmy Golden with Sylvia against Tracy Smothers and Jeff Jarrett. Big return tag team match, Dutch Mantell against, and Rick Morton against Wendell Cooley and Jerry the King Lawler, and that special penalty six-man tag match. If any of the each six of the six members of this tag match loses, there's a different stipulation, a different penalty that goes along with it. Beauty and the Beast with Downtown Bruno take on superstar Bill Dundee, the exotic Adrian Street, and the lovely Linda. Five big matches all coming up this coming Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. Hope to see you there of those five matches, that big return tag and that big special penalty match. 
Now, P.Y. Too High, his whole Japanese juggernaut are out here with him. Shogun, Samurai, Tojo, and here comes the Wild-Eyed Southern Boy. Where the sun shines high, where you learn to drop a book with just one shot. Where a boy learns the right to become a man. We got a one for all, 10-minute time limit match coming up here. Out of Springfield, Tennessee, 229 pounds in the ring on the right, Tracy Smothers, and going against him. All right, a total weight of 289 pounds from Jackson, Tennessee. <laughs> P.Y. Chuhai, sometimes known as Phil Hickerson. He's got, you, you, you uh, called it right. he's got the Japanese team of Samurai Shogun at ringside, as Lance said, and Tojo has that kendo stick in the corner, too. Tracy, uh, oh, his station of Tojo is stationing them around the ring. So they pretty well got all sides of the ring covered here, looks like. Referee Jerry Calhoun is trying to take care of that right now. Uh, this could be a doggone good match, Dave, if we don't get a lot of outside interference in there, you know? I think that's probably the key. If we can keep Tojo and the, uh, the Japanese team out of it, it should be a good one in the middle of the ring. Hickerson standing side headlock on Tracy. Tracy shucks him off, catches him with a hip toss, and builds him right out in the middle of the ring as Phil Hickerson may get a little more appreciation of the opponent that he has in there right now. No, he didn't have the fight. Of course, that's Yamamoto oh, and yeah. Hickerson. Hey, they'll screen that, keep you off balance. Do not like Shogun Masamuni and Samurai Shinji out here by this ring. Bad enough to have Tojo, but when you got three of them. And now the crowd's saying, no, he did not, and he did not. Tracy Smothers may get a little sight going at him right there with him continually hollering about the tights. Well, and Hickerson probably figures that uh, he can keep working on the referee and maybe get that call, uh, figuring that there's no way Tracy can, can move a 289-pounder around like that. Mm. Oh. Chop, return with a fist up on top of the head. P.Y. Chuhai, part of his uh, wrestling attire, too, is a very well-taped right hand. You can see it right there. And he uses that thing on that chop, boy. It's like uh, hitting with a plastic carrot Paris uh, cast on your hand. A little test of strength in there. Tracy with very good height. He's a strong young man. That's not to say that P.Y. isn't. Turn the foot to the midsection and takes Hickerson down to his knees. Uh-oh, jabbed him right smack in the throat. And that ended that assault. Sure did. That's uh, one of the dangerous things about P.Y. Chuhai and anybody from the Tojo Yamamoto stable. Boy, they find a small opening. They are going to go for it and try to hurt you and take you out of the rest of the match. And that's what he was trying to do right there. And so far, it looks like it's working for him as now P.Y. Chuhai is taking control. Chop across the center of the forehead. And here's Tojo with a kendo stick. Hopping away with the end of that kendo stick on Tracy's mother's. And you can see the weld where he hit him right on the back. He nailed him hard. And there's the big chop from P.Y. Goes to the ribs with that jab into the fingers, which is illegal. The chop is okay, but not the stab with the end of the fingers. And particularly with his hand taped up the way it is. He zeroes in, and look at Yamamoto while the referee's back and T.Y. Chew high away. Tojo rifles him one with that kendo stick, and now right back on Tracy Smothers. Oh. And a whip across the ring. Boy, there's that double hand right straight at the throat. Catches him with that cross, decks him down, picks him up, and Tracy, foot in the midsection, but it doesn't stop. Nope. Back, that little short back of yep. the fist. Got that's right. where that tape really helped, Dave. Oh. Yeah, he tried it once before. This time, Shogun tripped Tracy up as he uh, came off the rope. 
Reeves talks to him about it. He folds his arms and no, I didn't do a thing. I was behaving myself, right. Well, that's exactly what we were saying earlier. It could be a great match if they'll stay outside. Look at Shogun now. Just reaches up, pokes him in the eye, chops him right there at the bend on the ankle. Whip across the ring, leapfrog from Tree. Oh! Caught him with that super kick right under the chin. Boy, a beauty. Oh, Yamamoto pitches in the kendo stick, throws line him, and the referee saw it, Dave. DQ on the stick and Tojo, but now look out. It's four against one. They all jump Tracy now. And Tracy's mama not raising no clue, got out of that ring as quick as he could. And his hand is raised on the disqualification. Four minutes, 39 seconds. Tracy with a victory. 439. And Tracy Smothers glad that he can walk out of there at all. But he walked out. As the referee caught C.Y. Chu High using that kendo stick to clothesline him. And he got him good with it, too. And then he was joined by uh, Shogun and Samurai who jumped in there and Yamamoto with his nickels worth. So at least it came out. Boy, this is one time I am glad to see Dutch Mantel and uh, Ricky Morton because I want to tell them something. Oh, uh, wait a right. minute. You can't tell us nothing. You may ask us something and we may tell you something. You're not going to tell us nothing because what you're paid to do is stand here and hold this microphone, which is exactly what you're going to do. I am the new for the uninformed. I am the world heavyweight champion. Now, I want to read you something. I'm going to lay this right here. Now, Dave, don't try to touch it because I know you're jealous of it. You know, some headlines came out in a paper past week, and the national paper said, Lola era over Mantell. That's me, new world champ. That's what it said. And now, Louisville, it says, Lola contemplates suicide over loss to Mantell. And I'm, uh, Charlotte Observer said, Mantell, new world champ. Lola reportedly leaving the country, and Atlanta Constitution says, Wrestling World Lookout. Mantell, new world's heavyweight champion. We're also going to have a National Enquirer and People Magazine going to do a feature on us. Uh -huh. But you I know, it's you funny how I think, no, don't tell no, us that no, we don't want to hear it. You know, a lot of things are going on. See, I beat Jerry Lawler for the world's belt. And then Ricky Morton, beat Jerry he Lawler. beat Jerry Lawler. And it looks like the big king, hey, the paper was right. The era is over. The new era is here, and it's my era. Now they want some kind of a match, and we're calling it the San Quentin Showdown. You see these handcuffs right here? I see him. He's going to bring, Lola's going to bring that bogus, low-life, egg-sucking dog, Wendell Cooley, in the ring. And they're going to take three handcuffs. There's four guys in a mask going to take three handcuffs in there, and they're going to put a handcuff on each rope all around the ring. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do, we're going to handcuff Wendell Cooley first, and we're going to leave the best for last. We're going to leave the big dethroned king. We're going to whoop him like the low-life dog that he is, and then we're going to handcuff him, and that means we win the match, plus, plus, after we get our hands raised, we get two minutes on them while they're handcuffed. Now, Ricky, you like that idea? I sure do, Dutch. You know, Jerry Lawler's yeah. here telling all the world, baby, in his backyard, that he is the king, that he can't be beat. Oh, well, we yeah. proved to you, Jerry Lawler, yeah. last week when Dutch Mantel, myself, beat you and Wendell Coolidge. We showed you what it was all about. Well, this week, brother, it's going to be your time to see what you can do with us. But you see, when it comes right down to nitty grit, Dutch Mantel and Rick Morton don't take no. Ooh yeah. Yeah, well, you guys just better stand here and listen because I got something to tell you that you're going to be interested in. I'm telling you now, don't go running off. I got something to tell you in here that's very important. And it involves all going, hey, what can you do? I, did I try to tell them or did you I? You tried to tell them. I tried to tell them it had to do with the championship the, belt, and they wouldn't listen. Let me get that out. They won't have any of that. Gonna I was going to tell them it had to do a lot with some big money involved in it, too, but they wouldn't listen, would they? Nope. No, uh -uh. they wouldn't do it. So 
I guess maybe that what we'll just have to do is uh, share the big news. Oh, oh. oh yes. I think they heard the word the money. money. Yeah, money, they yeah. heard money. Not money. I know what it is. It's a personal appearance that you want us to make a sample for well, the big that's money. Not Ricky, what do we charge? $5,000. Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind. What I wanted to do... You said something about money. Now, yeah, I ain't got all day. Yeah, I, I know. I said something about money, and I I'm said something about that. That. I'm going to ask Mr. Coffey if he is out there. Please bring in the official What's communication. The side of, side of we people. have heard from the championship committee of the unified heavyweight title, and Mr. Guy Coffey. Thank you, Guy. Here, let me read this to him out here. Okay. What has he got? He is the representative of the CWA. With big the, deal. Hey, big deal. Will you what just say it? All right, I'm going to tell you what it has to say to CWA officials. This letter is to inform you that the World Championship Committee has reviewed the tape of the title match between Jerry Lawler and Dutch Mantell in which Ricky Morton was the special referee. After careful consideration, the championship committee has ruled that Dutch Mantell's victory be overturned and no, nullified, nullified, wait a minute, that's not all, wait a minute. and that the championship reverts back to Jerry Lawler immediately. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Dutch, Dutch Mantell is instructed to relinquish the world belt to the representative on hand, and furthermore, for his part in what was an obvious collusion, Ricky Morton has been fined $5,000. Hey, that's what it is. It has it right there. You heard what it says. It comes from the championship committee. Guy, that's the official communication. I ain't giving it up. I ain't giving it to nobody. Give him the belt. You heard what it says right here. You read this right here. It said, you will turn over the belt to me right now. Right there. You read that right there? That's what it says right there. Instructed to relinquish it immediately. Right there. Read it. Can't you see it? Let me show you something here. Hey, come on, Judge. Now, don't start that stuff. Oh, hey, Dutch, on. will you quit? Hey, hey, come on, hey, Dutch, hey, not hey, quit hey, that hey, stuff. Hey, You're now, breaking hey, the now. guy's glasses up like hey, that. Hey, that's ridiculous coming in here. Come on, Dutch. You guys, I'm telling you, what it is. he's already been fined hey. $5,000. He broke his glasses right down here. Hey, guy, I'm sorry. You okay, guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boy, I got to tell you one thing. That shows you the kind of shows you the kind of breeding those two guys got. I thought maybe Ricky Morton had a momentary lap. Let me just anybody... say this. Yeah, they're real tough. They can take somebody like Mr. Coffey's glasses and break them. That's all you can do. Let me tell you something, Mantel. You know now you're not the champion. You never were the champion, brother, and we still got something in store for you. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> Rodney Napper climbing up in the ring with Chris Frazier right now, set to go with uh, tag team action, and they're coming back this time to be, though, officially in the ring rather than uh, out here standing by though there. Well, I tell you, that it is just irritating. These are going on about that man telling Morton just burns me up. They pulled something, busted Mr. Coffee's glasses. No call for that. Okay, we got more troublemakers on our hand right here, Dave, and You're I'll right. tell you. Tell you what, one fall, 10-minute time limit match. Out of Halls, Tennessee, Rodney Knapper standing in the ring. His partner in the corner from Mississippi, Chris Frazier. Masamuni, uh, Shogun Masamuni and Samurai Shinji at a total weight of 530 pounds. Tojo Yamamoto in the corner and also out here, P.Y. Chuhai. Yeah. Boy, these guys get that ceremonial sword out and hey, I'm, I'm just delighted they didn't today knock it yeah but you, i've seen you swing that thing around it's right on it for me to be the one to say hey i introduced these people 
to America, this tag team right here. So, brother, I'm not going to stand here and talk to you. I brought the best team. We are going to deny, uh, just dominate everything in the wrestling session around here. So all the guys are terrified of these guys. So we're just going to keep on, and we're going to keep on. Finally, we're going to give them the recognition they need. So I'm not going to be talking to you anymore. I'm going to give them my personal advice. Yeah, great. Uh, some advice oh, there for on, Kojo. Kojo. Kendo Kendo stick across the back. Boy, he is just killing Rodney Napper with a kendo stick. Coming over, Shogun Masamuni kicks him right in the head. Tags Samurai Sinji. And a double chop Napper. Buckled his legs, hip tossed him over, stomped down on him. Man, these two guys. And you know, the sad thing about it is, Dave, both of these guys have a great marriage of the Oriental martial arts and catches catch can wrestling. I've seen them now in about four matches, and they are dynamite. They don't need all of this stuff. But when you got somebody like Yamamoto and P.Y. Chu High egging them on, you can see the kind of attitude they got. They didn't need much egging either. Now they got Chris Frazier in there now after working over Rodney Napper for a while. Sojo shouting instructions in Japanese. Nickerson, Nickerson shouting some Japanese too. It looks like he's been to the Tojo Yamamoto school here. Samurai stands him on his head in a big ball suplex and kicking down on Chris Frazier. Frazier and Napper just have not had a chance into the rope, and man, he turned him loose. What a chop he nailed him with. Tag Shogun Masamuni, who is up on the ropes, and as he comes down, double chops Chris Frazier right straight down to the mat. Picks him back up again, and there's another tag. I believe they could get the pin right now. They have yeah. battered on him with such force. Shogun off the rope. Oh. There's that spinning back kick, and he kicked his brains out. Wow. Two, three. Well, it was just total. Uh, Hickerson, uh, P.Y. Chuhai, did call one thing right over here. He said they were going to dominate. Well, they dominated this match. It was almost total domination of this match. As first they worked on Rodney Napper and then Chris Frazier. And finally, after two minutes, 41 seconds, they got the cover and the victory in the match. And it told, Tojo won't call them off. They leaving them in there. No excuse again. I mean, this is the kind of thing that just gets people so upset with guys like that. And look at Yamamoto egging them on, saying, yeah. throw him out, throw him out. And now, Yamamoto with that, yeah. Get him out of there, Randy, for crying out loud. They've already beat the stew out of them. Now they stand out here and... Oh, that's funny. Yeah, isn't that funny? Person's having fun, yeah. Oh, real sportsman. Okay. Let's take a look at that spinning back kick that he nailed him with. Man, look at this off the ropes into one he'll go back over and get the slingshot effect off the other rope it's being held by samurai and here comes shogun wham and i mean just absolutely kicked the props right out from under snap that head back it was all over at that point i mean it was over before, before that, that they actually. wouldn't end it that's, that's where the problem was Okay, Dave, shoot. Let's go ahead and get into the next match here. We've got another good tag match coming up. I love it. Big yes, action indeed. today, buddy. Boy, another good team here. Look at this. Scott Steiner with Todd Morton up there. Team that uh, weighs in at about 448 pounds. Scott out of Detroit, Michigan. Todd Morton out of Bardstown, Kentucky. And stepping into the ring right now, rugged tag team. Total of 478 out of Montgomery, Alabama, Jimmy Golden. And out of Tampa, Florida, Frankie the Thumper Lancaster in their corner, not only downtown Bruno, but that man right there, Robert Fuller, the Tennessee stud. He's dressed fit to kill today. He's got his big hat on, his suit and tie, and 
referee Jerry Calhoun says, do it to it. Gentlemen, Jimmy Golden was Scott Steiner. Also, isn't this the fella that that lady beat up there I a little bit ago? I think it is. Yeah, the one in the Oh, yeah, suit, downtown yeah. Bruno, I see. Well, what's the occasion? You dress well, so fine today. <laughs> I am looking real nice, son. I let you think I bought this out the same shop where you get yours. But I didn't, baby. This is an order. This is a pretty piece of suit right here. Let me move on right now to what I'm out here to talk to you about today. I'm talking about a new man in my stable, Frankie Lancaster. And one of the reasons he's made this stable, his attitude, baby. This man right here is just full of the right kind of attitude. You know what I'm talking about. You've officially signed him into the stable then, right? That's right. That's right. You know, I had times where I came out here to do official signings out here, but I figured that days are over, baby. That some people are talking about. Hey, what you you that good ball out or ball over there? Well, that's kind of, oh, yeah, using it. I look at Fuller. Boy, I tell you, he's over there screaming at the referee. My hair looks real nice. That was very Yeah, yeah, I know you. I remember you from a little earlier. You're the one the lady beat up, I think. Yeah, I believe that's downtown, Bruno. That's one referee right there that's woke up now. He's going to be doing his job. You got him straight, huh? I tear that patch off your shirt, boy, and you find another place to referee. Well, in the ring right now, Frankie the Thumper Lancaster, the newest official member of the stud stable, going in with the muscle man from the Motor City, Scott Steiner, and he's a rough one. You know, Lance, I was talking to you about attitude before we were interrupted. That man right there talks big, Frank Lancaster. Therefore, in order to stay a member of this stable, he's going to have to show me big action. Get out of here! Well, look at this! Hey! You're going to get rid of your cousin, too? A clear case of double teaming right there. Referee. Oh, yeah. It sure was with Golden and Lancaster in the ring at the same time, but Scott Steiner was able to handle the traffic. And Lancaster and Golden back out here, and there's a big powwow complaining about all the things that happened to them. And the Tennessee stud is saying there's one way to correct it. Get back in there and tear them up. I'll tell you what, these boys are going to get fired up here in a minute. And there's a Mr. Scott Steiner and this Morton that's going down, and I mean going down hard. I don't like rock and roll anyway. And there, there goes Fuller again. He's on a tear today. He's back up there giving a little pep talk to gentleman Jimmy Golden, his cousin. Lancaster throws Todd Morton off. Uh-oh. He grabbed him by the hair and jerked his feet right out from under him. Standing right here and thought, what was he, patting him on the head? Jimmy Golden parked. Morton come in there trying to swing at him when he knew he's not the legal man in there in the first place. And Jimmy had to do just what he had to do. And that jerk that pump down. That's the way to do it, Todd Morton, an awfully good young rookie, meeting some hard times as the thumper on the reverse neck breaker slams him down into the mat. Now the smiles are starting to come out. Bag goes from Thumper to Golden, and Golden takes you over. You know something, Lance? That boy there in there wrestling right there, he's not old enough to be in a professional wrestling ring in the first place, and I know it because I wrestled him the other night, and he whines and he cries when you get him in that position right there, and that's a half a man that does that. Hey, he's one of the best young guys to come along in a while, I'll tell you. Well, that's my opinion. That's true. Right there now, Pierce dipping on his chest. Okay, I want to see a whine and cry out of this guy. Big Scott Steiner is in there. Slams ahead of Lancaster. Yeah, he is double teaming them. You heard what Fuller said. That's a kind of convoluted logic that you can find in the stud stable. Oh, and a pile driver the referee didn't see. Count of one, count of two, count of three. Todd Morton slammed down by Golden. The thumper in Golden's hands up in the air. And the 23. Four minutes and 22 seconds. We got to take time out. More wrestling and the big expiration of time still to come.
card of action, five big matches, Evansville Coliseum, Wednesday night, return tag team match for the main event, Dirty Dutch Mantel and Rick Morton take on Wendell Cooley and Gary the King Lawler, special six-man penalty match, this is how it works, if Adrian Street loses, Garvin gets his music right, if Bill Dundee loses, he's going to have his head shaved, if Downtown Bruno loses, he leaves town, the Beast loses, the good guys get five minutes with Garvin, if the Beauty loses, Dundee gets his suit back, if the lovely Linda loses, Garvin gets five minutes with her alone. Beauty and the Beast with Downtown Bruno against superstar Bill Dundee, the exotic Adrian Street, and the lovely Linda. All that action Wednesday night at the Coliseum. That's right, Michael St. John. I've been in an awful lot of matches down there at 400 Court Street, but this is the first time I've ever been on a six-man tag with a stipulation like this. Well, let's have it's a first for this kind of match. Let's be a first for the how it's going to end. If we beat them all, if Adrian beats one, I beat one, and Linda beats one, there's a whole lot of stipulations end up the same way. There's nobody talked about that, but we're going to find out if that'll happen because that's exactly what's going to happen. Garvin, I'm taking you out, and Adrian or Miss Linda's going to take one or the other out, and it doesn't really make what difference which one it is. I want the suit back, and I'm getting it back, brother, so Garvin, you're mine, punk. There's a whole lot of stipulations going on. Goofy and the Beast, what a joke. I mean, when I stride to the ring, I turn heads. When Garvin minces or waddles the ring, he turns stomachs. As far as I'm concerned, he looks like a fat, horrible little ugly duckling trying to imitate a beautiful swan. If you want to imitate me, Garvin, why don't you try to imitate some of my wrestling skills? Then you might get somewhere. All that action coming up Wednesday night, Evansville Coliseum. Five big matches, including the return tag team match with Mantell and Rick Morton against Wendell Cooley and Jerry the King Lauder. Lawler. Lawler CWA tag team match. Robert Fuller, Jimmy Golden with Sylvia against Tracy Smothers and Jeff Jarrett, plus the big six-man penalty match. See you Wednesday night. We've got our big expiration of time match coming up here in just a moment. And that's going to put the king, Jerry Lawler, Wildcat Wendell Cooley against the Beauty and the Beast. And while they're putting down that pink mat, which the Beauty and the Beast uh, always wrestle on, we're going to take a second to talk to the King and Wildcat Wendell Cooley. What I want to do is I want to see if Dutch Mantell has got any guts at all. Dutch Mantell, if you're half the man you say you are, because you're no longer the champion, you'll come out here right now and bring me my World Heavyweight Championship belt. Is that right? Because, like I said, Dutch, you're not the champion. And as far as I'm concerned, as far as the fans are concerned, and obviously as far as the championship committee is concerned, you never were the champion, brother. You and Rick Morton got together. You pulled your little stunt. Well, it got you by to pose as a champion for two weeks. But that's all. So I hope you didn't get too used to having that belt around your waist. Because I promise you, you'll never have it around there again if I got anything to do with it. Well, uh, simple statement from the king about Mantell. Wendell I just want to say something real short and sweet to you, Ricky Morton. You made yourself a nasty bed, pal, and now you're going to have to deal with it. Let's talk for just one second. I know they want us in the ring. The San Quentin Showdown, boys. That's the time where we don't worry about pinning anybody. It's time to start hurting somebody, and there won't be any referee in the ring to pull us off of you. You'll just be there, and you'll be handcuffed, shackled to those ropes, and it'll be me and Wendell Cooley to just have our way with the both of you, and that's exactly what's going to happen. All right, it's going to be an interesting match when it comes about. There's no question about that. Okay, this is going to be an interesting match also. And Lawler and Cooley will be in there against the Beauty and the Beast. And here they come out with uh, downtown Bruno acting as valet Terrence Garver and Mark Gouleen. It's going to be uh, an expiration of time match here as they step through the ropes. Terrence Garvin, Mark Uline, Beauty and the Beast on one side of the ring. They weigh in at about 465 pounds and at about the same weight across the way. It's Wendell Cooley in the ring right now and his partner, the King, Jerry Lawler. Here we go with Cooley against the Beast, Mark Uline, back to the corner. Garvin holds him up in the corner while Uline nailed him with a right fist. Look at this. Everybody in the ring. Right off the bat. Oh, oh yeah. Up. Mantell and Morton hit the ring. And go after Cooley and Lawler. Well, I guess I didn't expect any more or any less out of them. They come jumping in here. The bout hadn't really gotten started. And look at that goofy Garvin, that laugh of his, and the way he 
skips around up there, drives me crazy. Lawler down with Morton pounding on him, and uh, Mantell getting some help out of Mark Goulin over there on Wildcat Wendell Cooley. Well, Morton is really beating up on Lawler here. He had him grinding his face down into the mat, then hitting him with a right fist. Off the rope, Rick Morton. Okay, I'll tell you, we're going we're gonna to take a break, and we're going to be back here, and we'll check this action. It's not over by a long shot. Be back in a moment. to have a whole lot more action in there. By golly, we're just flat out of it. Hey, Dave, I want to be sure for anybody who got in here late to tell them that we uh, got the official communication from the Unification Heavyweight Championship Committee, and they reversed that bogus win that yes. Dutch Mantell had. Find Ricky Morton in here, and those stupid guys take it out on the messenger guy, Coffee, who is the representative, busted his glass.